But um, we'll still like to uh, retain the senior advocate of Nigeria, John Odubela, along with um, uh, just one more person who is the SSA to the Minister of Mines and Steel Development in Abuja. We'll be getting into that conversation in a bit. Stay with us. You have heard the term Zamfara gold, but is there such a thing? Let's listen to this. There is provision for anybody to buy the minerals, but there are rules for you to purchase these minerals. Now, what the Zamfara governor is doing, and I said he needs to get his narratives right so that people don't misinterpret what they are doing. What they found out is that most of these minerals were being sold to bandits. That was what was phony banditry and all this insecurity in that area. You see, artisanal miners, they will go there and make the, and get their gold out. And they are desperate because they are subsistence people. They need money to feed their family. So they will sell to whoever comes to buy from them. They were selling to these bandits who will buy from them very cheaply. You know, for a man that is desperate for money will sell to you at any amount. And they will now go and resell at higher profits across the border and all that. And what they do, they exchange that for guns, bullets, ammunition, and it was swelling banditry. So what the government is doing, which is quite commendable, the governor, the governor of Zamfara, is that to, they are winning the people away. Win as when you win a baby, uh, that's what I mean. They are winning them away from the bandits. So, okay, don't, instead of selling to those people, they put a premium. Those people will buy maybe at 5,000 naira per gram. They say, come and sell to government at 15,000 naira per gram. So rather than allow the bandits to buy the gold from these people, government is acquiring that gold. And it's good for government. Also, it's good for peace and stability in that region. Well, Mr. Uluwade Dayo joins us. He's a senior special assistant to the Minister of Mines and Steel Development in Abuja. Well, thanks for joining us. You just listened to the minister, of course, your principal, who said that the minister, uh, the, the governor, buys the gold from the artisanal miners in his state. There are a number of questions a number of people are asking about that one. Can we say the same for the governors in the, North, in the Niger Delta, for instance, if they say, okay, well, because, you know, people are committing crime of uh, uh, siphoning oil in our, our environment, we can also buy them and sell to the federal government. What do you say to them? Good morning. Good morning, Nigeria. Um, well, what, what we're trying to say here is, first and foremost, um, the, state, the state government can get involved in mining, but they must do it through limited liability companies. 
basically each state can form a, a limited liability company and then they can purchase license and they can get involved in mining. Now, in, in, in view of Zamfara, in Zamfara State, they have a peculiar problem. And the thing is that they have a lot of insurgency, which has been basically berating the whole of the, the Northwest. And what is happening here is you have subsistent miners who are mining in, in the state, basically for their daily living. And what they're doing is whoever comes and buys from them, they sell. And then what is happening is that those that are buying the gold, as it were, are uh, using it, uh, buying it at very reduced rates and uh, taking advantage of that in buying arms and causing insurgency within the region. Now, what is happening here is that in conjunction with the federal government, the Zamfara state government is trying to mop up the gold that is being, that is being mined by the artisanal miners. So in other terms, also the Zamfara state government have actually, you know, um, formed a limited liability company to even get involved in this thing. Any state can, can form a company and get a, buy, a, a buying center license, whereby they can buy minerals from different parts of the country uh, to enable them be involved in the activities of mining. You, you've listened to this um, conversation, this argument of the Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development. What's your take on it? Thank you, sir. Hello? Please, please go ahead. I, I don't know if you have any response to that. Yes. You just listened to the Minister of uh, Mines and Steel Development as well. As yes. Uh, I, I think uh, there is need for us to clear some of this... Uh, uh, interpretations or misinterpretations that are going on. And I think uh, clearly the law is very clear. First of all, if you look at the Nigerian Minerals and Mining Act, is in chapter N162 of uh, laws of federation, you will find out that um, under that laws, the federal government is vested with exclusive right to hold those uh, minerals on behalf of the people of Nigeria. And when you look at the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended, particularly uh, item 39, you will see that uh, mines, minerals, uh, oil fields, oil mining, fall under the exclusive list of the federal government. And so, it's, except you get the facts correct, you will find it rather absurd to see the involvement of the state government in mines and mineral resources to the extent that um, the governor will go to the CBN, will take gold to the CBN, and um, be asking for money. You see, I think it's the impression that was created that has brought us to where we are now, where you have people misinterpreting what had happened. You see, strictly, if you look at even under the CBN, Central Bank of Nigerian Act Two you'll find out that the way the CBN is carrying it, it's also bringing some, some sort of uh, 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 disturbing uh, circumstances. Because you'll find out again that what is the business of the CBN in taking gold from uh, Samfara State Governor. So I think... Uh, my own advice is that uh, the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation needs to come out clearly on this issue to clear the, 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 the air. I know the, the Honorable Ministers have uh, made attempts, which is good, but uh, I still feel that um, the area of uh, selling to bandits at uh, the reasons is where I still think there are issues. Because under the Nigerian laws. It is the ministry, Federal Ministry of uh, uh, Mines, that will grant licenses 
to companies who intend to explore mineral resources. Hmm. Well, and um, there are conditions. So if you find out that they are selling them to bandits, then maybe there's now a need for us to look at those conditions under which those licenses hmm. are granted. Well, well, we'll get to that argument of because I'm, I, I also wonder if indeed the Minister of Mines and Steel Development is aware that this kind of thing is going on, selling uh, gold to bandits who use them, who use the proceeds to procure uh, arms and ammunition for themselves. Perhaps that's the security information that I think that I want to believe that the minister would have passed on. But let me get back to uh, Mr. Adira. The, the, the conversation here is about the nomenclature Zamfara gold. Well, will it also be or your gold or or cano, uh, livestock, or um, uh, equity oil. That, that perhaps is the issue that needs to be addressed right here now. So because once the word is out there, just as uh, when uh, Mr. Uh, Silas Ono, who raised the issue, uh, was discussing this conversation this in the morning, earlier on, on the program this morning, he was saying that the word on the street is, it's Zamfara gold. And we can just as well say that each state with mineral resources would have its own name labeled on everything that comes from them. What do you say to them? Um, <laughs> very interesting. Um, the thing is that you can't take a nomenclature away from a mineral. In terms of refining minerals, there's what you call a KYC process. Basically, you must know the origin of where the mineral is coming from. There is gold from Elisha. There is gold from Kebi. There is gold from Niger State. If you want to, uh, to, to if, if, you're legitimately, if you're legitimately trading in gold, they must know where the gold originates from right to the end point, or a, or a, or a refinery will not take it. I just want to make also one clarification. CBN cannot buy raw gold, nor can CBN buy smelted gold. CBN can only buy refined gold, and they would buy it for their reserves. As you see in the PAGME process, you will find out when Just, the, just when, a quick one on that, Mr. Adida, just a quick one on that, Mr. just a quick one on that one, where you heard Mr. Dubella say the other time that, look, it, it is okay, but it's supposed to be an interface, and it's also what Mr. Onu said earlier, it's supposed to be an interface between the Federal Ministry of Mines and Steel Development and CBN, and not the Zamfara state government. Yes, I agree with you. And the truth is that um, I believe there's been some media rep uh, misrepresentation I, I mean, in, 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 in order to do what this thing. I'm not aware, I, I don't know, I mean, I don't have the facts in terms of whether CBN has actually bought from Zamfara. I, I'm not really aware of that. It is the purview of the federal ministry. It's the purview of the federal ministry to grant the licenses to limited liability uh, 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 companies. And it is within that purview for us to regulate and ensure that there's an enabling environment for whoever the licensee holders are. And like I said earlier on, states can purchase licenses through limited liability companies, use it as an SPV, and invite investors to run those licenses. Well, okay, Mr. Dubel, I don't know if you want to have a quick uh, response to that before we take a break. Yes, I think uh, I agree with him to the extent that the state government, yes, can uh, incorporate companies, can have a joint venture, and then apply for the license from the federal Ministry of Mines. Yes, but uh, I think the impression, and that is why the, there's fury everywhere, is that um, it's, it's not, there's nothing wrong too in saying naming is Ampara gold. I mean, the intention is not to say that that gold uh, belongs to the state government. No, it's still by our law uh, exclusively vested in the federal government. So I think is the impression that is being created because I believe there's no need for, for the governor going to this extent and giving the impression. And that is why uh, the governors from the, the South South are also saying that, uh, uh, well, if that is the case, then that means they too can do same in with the uh, oil in their states. And that's why I think uh, the 
Federal Minister of Justice, particularly the Attorney General, needs to come and clear most of this uh, uh, furor that is going on, particularly okay. in respect well, of people giving different interpretations. Yeah, yes. well, there are a couple of other issues to raise on this matter, Mr. Dubella and uh, Mr. Dida. We'll be back after this break. Stay with us, please. Just a quick one, Mr. Odubela. Um, you, are on, you are aware that um, Zamfara State government, as a result of this success, if you can call it that, um, have come up with their own uh, first uh, gold reserve, to call it, in, in, in the country. Um, as a result of that, they now have a, a gold reserve in Nigeria. State has a gold reserve. Um, and just as you have also in, you know, uh, uh, identified there's a possibility for other states to go the same way. But how legal is that, given that, you know, over the years, uh, it was just recently that River State, uh, you know, uh, procured a part of um, uh, an OML that belongs to an uh, oil, oil company in Nigeria. And of course, you are not also unaware of that spat between River State and Bayelsa State over one oil field. So how legal is that fact that Zamfara State government is coming up with their own gold reserve? No. Ayo, I mean, I don't understand. You see, the Nigerian Minerals and Mining Act is very clear. You see, the all minerals resources in, under, upon, they are vested in the federal government, the Federation of Nigeria, and they are holding it on behalf of the people of Nigeria. So, even if any minerals are found in a state and they are in commercial quantities, by that law, they are vested in the federal government. And the only way the state can partake is when they form a company or they are in a joint venture and they apply to the federal government for license to enable them explore that minerals resources. So except what that particular state is saying is that, yes, this is what we have done, and that uh, we are now reserving that uh, finished uh, product. So otherwise, I mean, it, 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 it is not possible because Mines, minerals, uh, oil fields, oil mining, they are under the exclusive list under the Constitution. And mm. item 39 is very clear. Once it is exclusive, that means it's only the federal government that has authority over every item on that list. Okay. So well, that's why I'm saying that it still needs further explanation. Mm. Otherwise, it will be legal. Well, uh, Mr. Adirayo, yeah. yeah, Mr. Adirayo, you want to quickly respond to that? The fact that Zamfara State government now uh, is coming up with a, f a gold reserve? Um, I, I, I believe um, what the um, the the um, San has said is correct. Um, as I mean, I, I don't believe we're aware that they have. Um, created a gold reserve because, like he said, a state can only get involved via a limited liability company and they have an SPV. Um, no state on its own can purchase any minerals, uh, nor can they have uh, that kind of resource. So basically, um, we're not aware. We're, we're not aware that they do have this, um, this reserve. You, you just said now that the states can purchase, uh, the, you said they cannot purchase any mineral. But what the minister is saying is that the, the state government has been buying off uh, artisanal gold from artisanal miners. So I don't understand. Can you expitiate? 
Um, basically, what's going on, I believe it, it's in conjunction with the federal government. I don't believe that it's being done just by Zamfara, Zamfara on their own. And like I said, it's a security initiative, uh, which, to be honest, is beyond my purview. But what we do know and what we do understand, it is uh, a matter of national security and is in terms of you know, delineating the, the insurgency within the, that northwestern region. Mm. Well, uh, co talking about the security angle of it, I'm wondering if that con communication, if that information has been passed on to the security agencies because it definitely is something that will give a lot, a lot of people concern that uh, artisans are selling gold to known bandits. And the federal government is aware of this, and yet, you know, we are buying off the gold from people who sell to bandits. That suggests that the people who sell to bandits know the bandits. What, what's going on? What I will tell you, there is a heavy presence of police, uh, uh, police, civil defense and army in Zamfara state. As we speak, if you go to Zamfara, there's a very heavy paramilitary presence. So they are aware and they are working on it. Um, the government is working on it assiduously. So there is a lot going on, but like I said, it's beyond my purview. It's, it is a matter of national security, but um, we're not, they're not sitting down. They're actually working on the situation. Well, just a quick one before we let you go, Mr. Adidayo. There is this uh, also understanding we have uh, that the report as recent as 2017 cited 92% prevalence of blood lead poisoning in children from some villages in the Zamfara states that we are talking about right now. So are there safety mechanisms in the licenses that the ministry gives uh, uh, to the licensees to ensure that we do not have the kind of crisis that we had in the Niger Delta. Oh yes, a lot of a lot of a lot has gone on since then. Um, we actually have a particular department called the ASM department in in the ministry, and basically there's been a lot of advocacy um, within the communities it, it, before you can even before we can even grant a license, as it were. There must be an agreement between the licensee holder to be and the community at large. And specific steps are put in place in an agreement so that it's agreed that certain things must be done in terms of health and safety, proper mining, and, uh, and so on and so forth. In terms of the lead poisoning, it was more of um, an, artisan, uh, uh, an artisanal um, thing where, where you had subsistent miners using crude methodology in the mining. But what we have now is there's been a lot of advocacy between 2017 to date, and it's still continuing um, as, 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 we, as, as, as we speak. So there is a lot, of, a lot going on in advocacy. There is a lot going on in, in, in stakeholder engagement in the different states. Well, we have to thank you very much, uh, Mr. Larry Dayo, SSA to the Minister for Mines and Steel Development. Thank you so much for your time, as well as Mr. John Ludubella, who is a senior thank you very much. of Nigeria. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time this morning.